you see this? Notice how all the ladies, they're just standing perfectly still on one foot. <laughs> morning clearly well maybe not clearly I don't know but it's uh, it's cold it's not windy but there's a slight breeze and the wind chill is about 20 degrees 20 degrees Fahrenheit I was planning to go on a walk with my neighbor our usual 645 to 7.15 walk. And then we both realized that it was uh, 21 degrees outside Fahrenheit. The wind chill of 14. We decided not to do our walk this morning. <laughs> but I did still, I did a workout still. I did uh, about a half hour um, workout. I follow this couple on YouTube and they also have an app which is really good uh, you can subscribe to it for like 60 bucks a year it's really really reasonably priced but they have a lot of different workout options you can use your own body weight you can use dumbbells you can use other equipment it's totally up to you how you want to do it but they have a variety of programs as well they've compiled like they've produced hundreds and hundreds if not thousands at this point of videos workout videos and uh, I'm trying to remember when I started using their videos probably like four years ago or something um, but anyway I've, I've used their programs off and on whenever I wanted to kind of you know kind of get back into strength training that's always my thing like I start strength training and then you know I might be pretty good for like a good 30 to 45 days and then usually something will come up and then I'll fall off the wagon for like a week and then I'll come back but then I don't you know like I have actually finished two of their 90 day programs like I was consistent it was good but then it's kind of like oh I did that and then I don't really go beyond it and anyway so I'm kind of I'm getting back on the wagon now with that, i um, going to have that workout. They now have one that's like geared towards folks over 40. And I'm like, you're speaking my language. By the way, these are just really cheap gloves I got from the Dollar Tree. So they were $1.25. And surprisingly, they actually keep my fingers warm. Which I really just got them because I couldn't find my work gloves one day. And I just grabbed them. Um, but they've, they've actually been working quite well. Anyway, I'm at my car right now. Oh, sorry. I'm totally rambling. The program and the YouTube channel, all that that I'm talking about is called HasFit. It stands for Heart and Soul Fitness. And this is, yeah, lovely couple that, um, you know, creates all these videos and puts them out there. Obviously, it's all free on YouTube, but you can go check out their website. You can go check out their app on um on the apple store and i think it's on android as well um but yeah go check that out i'm not sponsored by them no affiliation whatsoever i just i like their work i support their what they do and what they stand for and so if, if you're looking for something <laughs> to encourage you to work out um and you prefer to do it indoors like i do um especially when it comes to the strength training aspect of it Definitely go check out the HasFit um, YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link below so you can find them easily. Anyway, right now I'm at my car, and as you can see, we have more feed for the chickadees. I, uh, I actually bought more than what you see here. I just happened to have moved those bags yesterday. So I'm going to go get the wheelbarrow now. Uh, well, maybe not right now. Actually, I think I'll have my son do that. I'll have my son go get the wheelbarrow <laughs> and load up the feed and move it over to the cans where they're going. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Because what I need to do today... Oh my gosh. 
you can probably hear in the background that pathetic crow is from one of the imposters well the last two both the two imposters that i uh, identified that's one of the imposters again and uh, that's the other imposter <laughs> so we're gonna take care of those guys today how's everyone doing oh your water is frozen yep okay i'm gonna go ahead and take care of the frozen water but before i do i want to show you guys something Notice how all the ladies, they're just standing perfectly still on one foot. Hi, Tyrone. Some of you may be a little sad to learn that uh, today will also be, oops, today will also be Freddy's last day with us in this uh, living form because it has become more and more apparent to me that Freddy is, he's kind of an imposter too. I mean, I knew early on that he was a rooster. So, you know, and he was an extra chick that came with the very first batch of chicks that I received earlier this year. Um, one of the ladies are in there trying to lay an egg. But um, in any case, I need to get this water flowing for these guys so they can drink. They can also eat some of this ice off the ground. It'll keep them a little hydrated just for a little while until I get this ice going. I mean, the water flowing and remove the ice. But my point of saying all this is that um, today is dispatch day, processing day, butchering day. Whatever phrase you might feel more comfortable with, but the re reality is, the truth of the matter is, we simply cannot have this many roosters with this limited number of hens. Go inside. Cece, inside. Come on. Here you go. Inside. As you can see, our garage is here. I'll do a whole separate video on that. We also have our rabbit hutch phase one set up. I say phase one because this is all we could get together before we had to leave town. So you can see the <laughs> door over here is sideways. It's hanging funny, so I need to adjust that. But more importantly, I need to put some trim up there um, and also actually divide it up. We're going to divide this into three really large sections. But for right now, what I want to show you is basically how I'm handling these water containers for the chickens. This one was totally frozen. 
over and all I did was I turned and this one you can you can see there's still ice in here but all I'm doing is I'm just running water from the faucet over the layer of ice because the water coming out of the faucet is warmer than the ice, of course. <laughs> you know, liquid salad, that whole thing. So I am trying to get, let's see if I can show you this on camera. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up on camera or not, but I'll try and see. But I'm trying to just use a piece of wood, there we go, to break up this ice. There's some leaves I got frozen in here as well. I'll take that out. And let's see. I think it's because it's there we go. There's still some more ice in there, but for the most part it looks good. Alright, this one, the container, it's pretty dirty in there, so I'll have to rinse that out before I add new water. But, what I've decided to do is because these five-gallon water containers can hold enough water to keep these guys hydrated for about three days, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep... Let's okay. <laughs> try and get this open. I'm going to basically have one out during the day, when it gets warmer today, it's supposed to get up into like the low 50s, I think. Uh, at that point, I will refill the other four containers that I have, but I will be wiser and actually keep them in the garage because the garage, um, it's not insulated, but it does stay a bit warmer than out here. So just trying to get this open. Oh my goodness! There we go. Oh, I don't know if I actually opened. Nope, I'm not gonna. Let's try this again. It's in there. It's in there. <sighs> Phew! All right. There's a little bit of dirt in here, but not much. So, that's good. All right. So, handy dandy apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna add that to it. Uh -huh. All right. I'm probably at about a quarter of a cup. I don't know, or five gallons. I don't really measure it, obviously, but. All right, so I'm not gonna fill it all the way up right now. Partly because this sucker gets pretty heavy. <laughs> so I'm going to carry it over to where the chickens are. It's a little over halfway full. And I can comfortably carry that back over to where the chickens are. Um, what I'm going to do to fill it all the rest of the way up is I'm going to just use a bucket. Why not use a hose, Evie? Why not use a hose? Well, the hose is, we're not emptied before the temperatures fell. So they have some frozen ice in them. I'm gonna just use this bucket right over here. See another one that's frozen solid. I'm gonna leave these out side of this area. Let them melt. So by midday, I should be able to get those reset and placed in the garage. 
Something knocked over. Although it could have been the wind. We've had a lot of wind. A lot of wind. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me just go ahead and give you guys the down and dirty view. This is what's left of that greenhouse that we set up back in like April or May. It's trash. We have to get everything. Basically my plan right now, my plan right now is to move what I want to keep out of there and into the garage. We're going to toss this whole contraption, recycle the metal, whatever. And then um, in January, my plan is to build um, a hoop house using cattle panels and some uh, just plastic sheathing. I think at least six millimeter size. I think that's right. In any case, but it won't be here. It's not gonna be in this location. This turned out to not be the best place. I am considering placing that hoop house somewhere in this vicinity. I've not finalized those plans yet, but I'm still working that out. I have a couple weeks left in the year to figure it out. And as far as the garden, you can see here some of the fall seedlings actually did come up and grew into plants. Most of them did not and that's okay. I fully recognize that I still need to clean this up. Very much need to clean this up. But um, I fully recognize that the placement of these specific raised beds I believe will be 100% conducive to everything I want to grow in the spring and the summer. Fall, winter, not so much. I think for fall, winter, what I'll need to focus on is actually areas like this. As you can see, all the garlic sprouted, which is amazing, but I wasn't quite expecting that. So, you know, we'll see how it goes as those mature. But this area right here which is the area I basically intend to use for my mini orchard. I wanna have lots of trees in this area next year. This actually looks like it will be the fall winter garden area. So well, I'm already planning ahead for next year in terms of how I want to prepare this area again with raised beds. It will need to be leveled out a bit more because as some of you know, with the installation of, or preparation for installation of our garage, we had to have a lot of, of dirt removed, a lot of clay. And so that was displaced into this area to try and even it out a bit more because this area had actually a much more dramatic drop than it looks like it has now. I don't know if you can even really tell, but hi Tyrone, we see you, we hear you. As for the garden, I know many of you, based on the views and your clicks, have been most interested in the gardening content, especially as it pertains to building <laughs> these raised beds. Um, and I appreciate you for watching this. I'm really glad to know that this content is helping and inspiring many of you. I want to let you know that, like I mentioned earlier, in January, I plan to work on getting a, a hoop house or a greenhouse, whatever you're gonna call it, set up. But until then, there's really not much more I plan to do in the garden. I will probably record a really short video on just removing the remaining plants that are in there and then preparing the soil for the spring. And I'll talk a bit more about how I'm doing it and, and why. But for now, if you, you know, just be patient with me. That will be coming in January. For now, we're just going to continue focusing on these chickens at the moment. And then I will also begin sharing with you some information about our rabbits. Because there's a lot to talk about there. 
Hey, good afternoon, folks. I was just editing this video and I realized it ended pretty abruptly because about an hour of footage that I thought I was recording did not record. And on top of that, um, I forgot to do an outro, which was not part of the hour recording. I thought I did that at a different time, but apparently I didn't. Anyway, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity though to show you something in addition to what I described in the video already. Uh, as far as how I'm dealing with watering these chickens in these cold temperatures. Today is actually the warmest day we've had all week. I don't know what the exact temperature is. I'm guessing it's probably in the 50s maybe because I'm only wearing like two layers. It's just like a thin layer and another thin layer. So I'm feeling really good in the sun right now. But anyway, let me show you really quickly um, something I described in an earlier video when I talked about um, watering your chickens and including some ACV in their water. I mentioned, or I demonstrated for you a couple of waters that I have, a gallon size and a five gallon size. Um, I mentioned in that video, which I'll link up here, I mentioned in that video that you can also use these um, like rubber bowls, which are very easy to manage in freezing temperatures because when the block of ice melts, you just pour it out and then you just refill it with new water. So I just wanna take a moment to show you that right now and also show you the status of those five gallon containers that we had set out earlier today. All right, so here you can see, I just turned over a large bin here and I put, <laughs> I put a couple of these bowls on top. I added about a tablespoon of ACV in each one and then added water. Actually, I think I added less than a tablespoon because these are not gallon size, they're, they're smaller. I have decided that it's just gonna be easier for me to just deal with these bowls for two reasons. One, it doesn't require me to lug a large, heavy five gallon container from the garage and back out here every morning and then the reverse in the evening. Secondly, these chickens are not going to be drinking five gallons of water a day. They just don't. They might have about half a gallon to a gallon of water. So this is a much more practical approach. And I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, but I will also add that I'm not discounting these five gallon containers just yet, not completely. I do envision at some point in the future having at least some of these chickens, if not all of these chickens that are left, placed in a coop. I think having a designated area in the coop for these five gallon containers would be fine because the coop in of itself will generally be warmer than the outside temperatures as a result of... Hi, Ty. Uh, <laughs> the temperatures will be warmer in that coop and um, we wouldn't have to deal with quite as much as far as the freezing <laughs> the freezing of their waters so anyway I just wanted to give you a quick update on that let you know where things stand as far as their water okay he's, he's a little blurry in the picture but it's tie again anyway um, but with all that said I wanted Okay, so with all that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and let you know that I do have several I have several others lined up coming up uh, over the next several weeks. Again, primarily related to the chickens. One related to the rabbits. <laughs> One about the garage build. And then another regarding the garden and what we've done with that and what we plan to do with that <laughs> over the remainder of this dormant season. So uh, got a lot of content lined up for you for the remainder of December and into January and February. Okay, if you want to make an appearance here, just say hi to the folks. You don't have to shout though, just say hi. You want to say hi? You good? Are you good? <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, <laughs> seriously? Seriously? On that note, before he crows again, thank you all for watching. 
be blessed, be a blessing to others, and I'll see you next time.